I've said that to her. Yeah. I'm like, yeah. Because she went lunch with my mother. Okay, we're going to reconvene the public session of the school board meeting. Um, I guess the uh, the first item on the agenda is to approve the minutes. Um, I think there's a series of minutes we've had since we've had a number of meetings since the last. Um, can I do them all together? Come on. Yeah. Okay. So hopefully everyone had a chance to, to read through the minutes from the last three meetings um, that were distributed earlier. And um, can I get a motion to approve those minutes? Move. Second. Okay, any discussion or changes or commentary to those? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, the minutes are approved. Um, with that, I think you're, yeah. you're up. Thank, Thank you. you. Good evening, everybody. Hope you everyone had a nice break and you're ready to go and recharge for the, uh, the last bit of the year that we have left, a couple of months. Can't believe it's here already. It by very, very quickly. Um, the first thing as part of my report on the agenda, I'm going to ask Karen Peterson to come up to help with this, is the track dedication. So we have a resolution um, that I'd like Karen to come up to, as the athletic director to um, ask the board for approval of the uh, track dedication resolution to Coach Mitchell. I don't know. Do you want her to read it or are you okay with not it. reading it? I think you, this is the same resolution you read last time, right? It is. Should be a dramatic <clears throat> reading, Karen? Dramatic, dramatic read, read, if you don't mind. <laughs> what? A dramatic read. <laughs> I like a good dramatic reading, Karen. I don't think so. Karen, we have one up here for you if you'd like. <laughs> yes, so um, as I mentioned last time, and we had a, a lot of students here that spoke on behalf of Jim Mitchell, but um, I'm pleased to uh, present this resolution to name the track the James Owen Mitchell track. Um, where is James Mitchell, a native of Brooklyn, New York, and product of Regents High School and Fordham College, where he also coached the boys track team, and Fordham University and graduated with a master's degree in classics in 1971. And whereas Jim Mitchell started his teaching career in Bronxville in the spring of 1978 as a Latin teacher and started the girls outdoor spring track program, in 1979, and by 1981, James Mitchell had started the girls' cross-country team and girls' indoor winter track program. Whereas Jim has spent the last 41 years as a girls' cross-country and girls' track and field coach at Bronxville High School, whereas since the spring of 1979, 57 girls participating in the aforementioned teams have won 170 All-American certificates. The girls' cross-country team has won 12 New York State championships. The girls' cross-country team, the indoor track team, and the outdoor track team have won 115 league championships. The girls' cross-country team has won 35 sectional championships. The indoor track team has won 33 sectional championships. And the outdoor track team has won 36 sectional championships. The indoor and outdoor teams have won five national championships. And 14 girls in the cross-country and track and field teams have been selected Con Ed Scholar athletes. Whereas many of James Mitchell's students have continued their running career at the collegiate level, and whereas in 2007, James Mitchell was inducted as the first high school coach into the National Track and Field Hall of Fame, and in 2013, James Mitchell was inducted into the New York State Public High School Athletic Association Hall of Fame. Whereas James Mitchell is retired from his head coaching position, but is still involved in our girls' track and cross-country programs as an assistant coach. Now, therefore, it be resolved that the Board of Education of the Bronxville Union Free School District honors and recognizes Mr. James Owen Mitchell for a lifetime of service to the Bronxville School and to the student athletes who have competed as part of the girls' track and cross-country programs. And be it further resolved that the Board of the Education of the Bronxville Union Free School District dedicates the newly renovated track at the Bronxville School by officially naming it the James Owen Mitchell Track. Is there anything else we can name for him? Look at all. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would also say that I know Karen received a number of emails, as I did, from uh, alum and uh, former runners and, and uh, people who knew Coach Mitchell very well, not only as a coach, but as a teacher, 
And it was really uh, heartwarming to read the impact that he had on their lives, not only within the track world, but outside of that as well. Um, so it, uh, it was quite an accomplishment. Yeah, the, they were great reads for yeah, sure. Yeah, they really yep. were. So. If we do this, can he, does he have to keep doing it? And if you do this, <laughs> we're not, yes, yeah, we'll, we'll make that happen. <laughs> Um, this is great. It's not every day you get to do something like this, so it's, it's a real honor on behalf of the board to, to, to do this and look forward to uh, presumably a ceremony to, uh, to accept it once we've approved it. So any, yes. any comments or discussion? Okay. Um, can I get a motion to approve the resolution? Move. Second? Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you, Karen. all of our track athletes, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, Karen. Um, from the next item, I'm going to go out a little, little out of order and ask um, to uh, ask that Rachel go through the recommended tenure appointments. It's on my D rather than B or C uh, first. And then I'm also going to ask her to um, ask the board to have approval of teacher recommendations as well, since we do have someone in the audience and his wife waiting patiently to be approved. Very nice. So I have the honor uh, this evening to talk briefly about the uh, four <coughs> teacher tenure candidates and the one teaching assistant candidate. And I must give credit to the principals who wrote their <coughs> recommendations to Roy and the board so eloquently. And I'm gonna be citing them uh, to give the community um, a sense of how proud we are of these tenure candidates this evening. The first is Brittany Brea. Um, as uh, secondary mathematics currently in our middle school and she came to Bronxville with experience in high school but quickly adapted to the needs of middle school students. Brittany has incorporated assessment into her teaching in such a way that her records are often used to inform and even predict student success when we elect to move students to more advanced math sections during the year. Brittany has developed an excellent reputation as a patient, kind, and effective teacher across the time she's been in Bronxville. She's a champion of the notion that in order to build capacity and strengthen skills, children need to be given a wide range of activity that provides varied yet consistent and appropriately scaffold challenging, challenges. Her classroom is always humming with activity and Brittany always, offered a always offers a range of activities within her class structure. Students enjoy being with Ms. Brea and she works to create an environment of respect and, re and rapport where every member of the class plays an active role and helps to move the work forward. Brittany was among the founding cohort for training in IDE, the Innovative De Designs for Education, and this work fits perfectly with what Brittany values about teaching and the shift in control from teacher to student-centric work is a paradigm shift that Ms. Brea had already incorporated into her work with her students. As the second cohort forms presently, we're certain that Brittany will be a strong support and guide to those teachers beginning to work through the process of reinventing their classroom structures. The second tenure candidate um, this evening is Ben Cornish, secondary science, specifically teaching physics for us. Ben has been a significant addition to our science department. He teaches core physics, and in that course, he is able to provide engaging, thoughtful lessons that consider the academic needs of his students, as well as the new science standards, which require an engineering approach to scientific inquiry. Ben's been instrumental in developing and delivering our advanced physics course, which has evolved into a computational physics course. He's also developed an introduction to engineering course that provides students a semester experience grounded in the concept of design thinking. Students are challenged to approach real world problems, iterate, embrace failure as a key component of the design process, and produce prototypes as possible solutions. Ben has kept informed about the field of engineering and computational physics by attending conferences across the country <clears throat> that expose him to the cutting edge technologies and curriculum developments that other schools like High Tech High are infusing in their classrooms. Ben's a fantastic teacher, an innovative practitioner, a leader in our high school, and is always willing to support student learning. 
He regularly has 10 independent students working with him on projects from drones to AP Physics C online courses. He has added tremendously to our science department, introducing a variety of new courses that provide our students with real world experiences, as well as computer program exposure that will leave them well prepared for college and beyond. It is important to note that he is also the coach of our varsity mountain biking team, and this has been able to provide students who have traditionally not participated in varsity athletics the opportunity to be on a varsity team. Our third tenure candidate this evening is Aaron Kind, guidance counselor. Aaron's been a significant addition to the high school guidance department, providing informal leadership throughout the last three years. Upon commencing his position, Aaron was given the most complex group of students in the high school. He has researched and mastered the information required to make informed decisions for his students and has been able to comply with all requirements to provide them with the coursework and services they need to be successful. He has made important suggestions both from his experience at Bronx Science as well as from conferences he has attended during his time in Bronxville. In addition, Aaron is the faculty advisor to our student faculty legislature, and as such, he's been instrumental in helping students to organize and deliver SFL Day the last two years. He's also helped our student leaders brainstorm ways to increase our school spirit. Aaron has innovative ideas and um, continues to expand services provided to students as well as how, at, so we can best position them for colleges and universities. The last teacher recommendation this evening is Rachel Sugarman, also secondary mathematics in our middle school. Rachel's background in elementary education and gifted instruction made her an immediate fit in our middle school. Rachel's teaching load has included both Math 6 as well as Math 6 Accelerated, MathCraft, and advisory classes. Rachel immediately reinvented the experience for middle school math students upon her entry into our school. She has incorporated a variety of innovative projects and classroom experience where students get to use math to solve problems as they develop answers to bigger questions. Rachel's classroom is inviting and her door is always open. Her smile and laugh permeate the halls of the third floor and she makes a real effort to help students navigate the social and academic levels of school. Students seek Rachel's advice and help in several important issues in which cases she has been able to help students get what they need from school. To continue her work with students after grade six, Rachel has volunteered her time to work on the middle school newspaper. This year-long club allows Rachel to continue to be a positive part of students' lives outside of math classes and advisory. Rachel always refers to the components of the Bronxville problem, Promise when she discusses the goals of her work and the blending of the Promise with her IDE work. She, Mrs. Sugarman has brought a much needed influx of energy, <coughs> enthusiasm, and professionalism to our sixth grade team. She's proven herself to be a perennial student and she is not content to rest on her already formidable background in the field of mathematics education. She recently applied and has been accepted into a doctoral program that she anticipates beginning in the fall. Rachel is a model for our faculty and how to connect with colleagues, how to bring research and ideas from the field into the classroom and how to help students continue to feel good about themselves as they work through new and unknown content. And our last tenure recommendation to the board this evening is for um, our teaching assistant, Brian Crowley, who has been a teaching assistant the last four years in our middle school, high school special education class under the leadership of Patrick Clark, one of our special education teachers. Um, he began his career in finance and immediately before coming to Bronxville was a mathematics teacher in a special education school. His work ethic is second to none, as evident through his rare absence and his commitment to our special education students. His sense of humor and caring personality serves our students well in difficult situations. <clears throat> he remains energetic and dedicated. He's been instrumental in supporting our students by modifying their curriculum across all subject areas. 
Brian has <coughs> developed a strong relationship with not only the students in his special class, but also with the students in our broader high school community. At any time one of his special ed students is in a play or a choral concert, he's there to support them. Brian has established positive relationships with both special education and general <coughs> education teachers, as well as with administrators and parents. Brian's a tremendous asset to our special ed program, and we look forward to him serving in Bronxville for many years to come. So we put those four tenure appointments before the board this evening. Five, right? Five. Five. So A3. Um, four teachers, one TA. Great, so can we get a motion to approve, thank you for that. Um, can we get a motion to approve um, the tenure appointments A through E? So moved. Second. Yeah. All in favor? Aye. 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 Great. Thank you. Thank you, congratulations. Congratulations. To the yeah, absolutely. Um, so um, we're going to continue with our personnel um, resolutions this evening, given that we have one um, new teacher in the audience this evening. So thank you, Brian Haling, for joining us this evening. Um, you have before you, um, under certified staff, uh, resignation, as well as a number of family leaves. In addition, there are four new teacher appointments. Um, these were all budgeted based on our early notification retirement incentive, and that includes Brian Haling as high, in our high school math teacher, um, Chris Hart, a new high school social studies teacher, Catherine Westerheim, uh, sort of new, some of you may recognize <laughs> her. <back>. She, <laughs> uh, she thought uh, better and has moved back from Texas, and <laughs> luckily we had an opening. Um, as well as Michael Whalen as a resource room teacher in our high school. In addition, you will find a revised list of teacher mentors, a point one overage to cover one of our family leaves, a teacher aid resignation, as well as a new uh, substitute teacher. In addition, you have before you this evening um, a resolution appointing the election personnel for the annual school budget vote and board election scheduled for May 21st, 2019. In addition, we're asking you uh, to approve the creation of a new civil service title, payroll clerk, as we had discussed in executive session, as well as revisions to our co-curricular stipend list and spring coaches roster. Also like to point out um, that we would like um, the appointment of one of our students, Molly Denning, as a student videographer for our student events. So you have before you resolutions A through R. Great, um, any questions for, on, on those A through R? Can I get a motion to approve A through R, please? Move. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. So, uh, Rachel, where do we sit with the um, openings now that, for the retirements? Um, so we, we have um, a few more. Um, we have the, uh, a part-time art position in the elementary school as well as a PE position in elementary, which is a shift. It was a high school PE yeah. retirement. Um, but we're doing some internal shifts, which results in an opening in elementary PE. So that's well underway. Um, in addition, we have a few more openings in middle school, including the 612 band position as a result of um, Vinny moving out of the country. And um, we also have just completed the search for the middle school resource room teacher, so that'll be on the May 9th <coughs> agenda. Um, and I think we are complete in high school. So we're in, we're in good shape. The early notification incentive worked the way it should in terms of allowing us to get out to the market early. Quickly. So I'll go back to my report, but Brian, congratulations. I'm yeah. glad you're here. Thank you. <laughs> Welcome. Thank you. Okay, I'm gonna go back to my report uh, and ask that Dr. Wilson come on up and 
provide the uh, board and public with an update on the middle school schedule, where things are at, how things are. I know you had a parent meeting last night, so you've got this presentation down cold, I think, by now. Um, so we're anxious to hear more about it. Good evening. Uh, last night we had approximately 40 parents uh, come to a, a, a dreary, rainy, cold Monday night meeting, so, which should tell you something about uh, the interest level. Um, I thought it was uh, very well attended and, and uh, uh, the event uh, was um, also informative. We, uh, we learned a lot. Many of our fifth grade parents were among those in attendance. Uh, for those of you who are not aware, we're looking at schedule changes <laughs> to the middle school um, and we're looking at, um, at value add moments where we can get more teaching time for our students and our teachers. Um, when, we have, uh, when we have consultants uh, come to work with us uh, at, from TC or math consultants, uh, they have to shift their paradigm for how to work with us because our time that we have with kids is so short that it doesn't fit their normal working paradigm when they're working with, uh, with schools. Um, our, our school is a middle school, and I give a lot of credit to Dr. Kehoe and the teachers who brought forth the notion that uh, the social emotional wellness of kids was equally important to the academics. And they did tremendous work to uh, give us a middle school. But um, it's important now that we look at what else a middle school should uh, should be considered to have. A successful middle school needs to have more continuity. It needs to have more time on task. 40-minute um, periods are really a vestige of junior high school. Uh, our new schedule would uh, uh, function with nearly one-hour periods, 56 minutes to be exact. Once a cycle, though, or once a week, those periods would be cut to 46 on one day uh, in order to uh, afford us some time to keep advisory. Um, what does that equate to in terms of teachable time across the course of a year? Uh, it, 42 extra hours of instruction in math and 42 hours of instruction in language arts and 42 extra hours in social studies and also 42 extra hours in science. 168 extra hours of, of instructional time is an extraordinary value add. Uh, what else does it allow us to do? Well, it allows us to e expand our teaching, not necessarily to grind through more content, but to go deeper. Uh, the way the structure of the schedule would work, teachers would no longer be teaching five sections of students, but <coughs> rather four. And um, although they're teaching four sections, they will be teaching slightly more than they teach presently. What that equates to is more time to get to know students, more time with the same students, a 20% reduction in the number of papers or tests that have to be graded allows for more time to spend on those students that are before you. I hope one of the, the byproducts of looking at a, a change in schedule is that we can also take a, a hard look before next year at homework. I'd like, to, uh, I'd like to see us reduce the amount of homework we're giving. This is not supposed to be an add-on, add-on, but rather more rigor during the school day and, and a, a little less rigor at night. Uh, we want our kids to be able to have more time to do drafting of essays in school. We want them to do more project-based learning in school. And we'd like them to do a little less busy work, a little less homework at home. Um, we hope that that's also part of the uh, part of the functionality. Now, this isn't magic time. It didn't come out of the air. We had to make some hard decisions in order to um, in order to create the schedule. 
And there are some, uh, um, there are some economies that I'd like to go through with you as well. Uh, the new schedule uh, only allows for um, exploratory classes that are state mandated. Uh, so the art program, the tech program, Mr. DiStefano runs, um, the, um, the computer program, those, and the health program, those remain intact. In they will not meet as often. Uh, rather than meeting on a six day or five day with a double block and then not meet the next day, they'll meet four times a cycle. Um, they'll also have two sections rather than the single section that we run now. So numbers will be much more favorable. Uh, numbers in exploratory classes can be the highest in our building at uh, sometimes <laughs> bumping into 25, 26. Uh, we expect those numbers to be uh, much more favorable at 17, 18. Um, so that's, that's a, a benefit. There's uh, some economy from world languages. World languages would follow a similar pattern where there would be multiple sections of world language on each grade level, but they would also meet on the four time a six day cycle schedule um, rather than the five times uh, that they meet now with one of them being a double block. What does that equate to in the year? It means a, 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 a about 13 hours less language instruction in the year. That does not come close to uh, negating the, uh, uh, the value add that students receive now for their attendance in seventh and eighth grade language classes. They receive uh, in ninth grade, once they complete that sequence, they get a year's uh, credit for foreign language from one half year seventh, one half year eighth. That would continue in force. Uh, we would not offer home ec in this, uh, uh, in this paradigm. And um, looking at the, at the uh, uh, state mandates for what, what's required in home and careers, uh, there's nothing about cooking and sewing. Uh, home and careers is about leadership development. It's about um, planning a fiscal budget. It's about understanding consumerism. Um, these are things that, that we and other districts in, in Westchester uh, have already opted to, um, to achieve through other means through the curriculum. We've also got some locally drawn uh, exploratories that would not be offered. Um, most recently, our creative writing uh, and uh, math craft and math lab and logic would all not be part of the curriculum as those independent courses. However, those, um, many of the tenets of those courses can be achieved within the curriculum because we have more expansive time to put them in. So those would also be, uh, um, they wouldn't be gone, they would just be repurposed uh, for the most part. Um, special education also uh, would shift slightly. Uh, we would not have uh, space for modified language, uh, and uh, modified language right now is not a choice. We, we uh, assign it based on where there's space, and currently it's Latin, but uh, we would not have a modified language program uh, for students in special education. And, uh, we f also feel that that's probably reasonable given uh, that it's not something that's done everywhere. And uh, more importantly, as you're grappling with um, the English language system and the math, uh, the math symbol system, you don't need another language system to compound what you're, what you're doing necessarily. The, um, the work uh, that we've done is uh, an outgrowth of challenge success. It's consistent with the promise. Um, the, uh, um, the hope is that what we are, um, we are going to achieve over time should be uh, um, a means by which students are given increased rigor and a more complete space in which to do uh, work. Uh, our consultants that work with us routinely will uh, find that we have a, a much broader landscape and, and, and canvas on which to work. Um, and uh, 
the schedule will go from a, an eight period day to a six period day. That equates to fewer transitions, um, fewer, uh, fewer times out in the hallways. Uh, the other um, I didn't mention is uh, PE. Uh, physical education will also uh, be truncated slightly. Um, less in terms of minutes, but uh, one less meeting period, but they will have 56 minute periods instead of 40 minute periods. Um, but they'll meet twice a cycle rather than three uh, times a cycle. And again, given the number of students who opt to take, um, to take sports in, in our school, we feel that uh, um, although we, we do meet the state mandates with this, uh, with this schedule change for PE, our kids are afforded a lot more physical activity on average than, than most kids are anyway. Um, those are the broad brush strokes of, of the schedule. Uh, those are the, uh, um, the, the main highlights I, I wanted to share with you tonight. Um, I'm happy to answer any questions you might have and um, thank you for your time. Thanks, Tom. Um, I appreciate the efforts you put in to try to recraft the middle school schedule. And short time I know that I know you, I know that schedules and minutes and periods are not a particular strength of yours, I would say. <laughs> so the fact that you worked so hard at that and got it right is quite impressive. So thanks. Okay. <laughs> um, quick question for you. Are we going to maintain the preschool prior to school help sessions or is that going to bump back to after? No, or. it will remain in the morning. And um, this was a, a question that yeah. actually parents had last night. We do really understand um, that uh, no matter where we put it, we're going to have about half of our population unhappy. Um, but, but pushing on the challenge success data, they tell us very, very succinctly that students should be starting school later. So putting extra help in the morning and, and um, having non-academics in grade eight in the, in the morning, the first thing uh, presently, has allowed for a little buffer before the day begins. Um, that will continue. Um, uh, past time will be cut to four minutes instead of five, which is uh, um, brisk, but we can get that done. Um, the work, um, the work of, of extra help, though, if you need that time, it should be available to you. And, and if you have to come in early for it, we, we understand that that brings you to school early. But you have the teacher's undivided attention, and you're not, uh, you're not having to make a, a decision between whether you're going to be with your friends uh, uh, outside or going to extra help. And we think that 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 trade-off is actually uh, working out pretty well. I'm curious, n next year at this time, how will you, what do you hope to see that tells you you're headed in the right direction or that you might want to do a course correction? Well, I, I'm very uh, hopeful that we have multiple check-in points during the year uh, from students, from teachers, from parents, and from uh, community uh, so that we know uh, what the, what the impact has been? Uh, I think one of the things that unfortunately is is predictable with making this change is that, uh, and it's, it's not a goal, but I think we're going to see um, our test scores increase. Mm -hmm. I'm not really uh, uh, I'm not selling anything here, and I, 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 I it's awkward to bring it up, but. Part of, part of this really is about giving kids time for mastery. And when we are talking about 40 minutes of ELA instruction, <clears throat> and most of the schools that we are very quick to compare ourselves to have 80 and 90 minute ELA periods every day, it just has to make a difference. And I'll just speak for myself. I think it's okay to talk about the scores. Well, it's okay. It's not. It's not a driver. But what is a driver is giving kids the time to really unpack some of the some of the more complicated work. Um, we we do know that teachers find it difficult to give lots of feedback when there are a voluminous number of papers to grade. Having few, uh, the class size will probably not be affected at all in core classes. So we enjoy numbers 
between 20 and 24 routinely. Uh, that should remain the same, but, um, but having one less section of students really allows us the, the, the chance to get to know students on a different level. And that's the, I think that's the real joy and the hope for us. <clears throat> what else did you hear from parents? Um, what else did we hear? Uh, they were interested to know that in our challenge success cohort, we, uh, middle and high school will go uh, um, to our second annual uh, meeting next month, um, that uh, the average lunch time for middle schools in these like-minded, very uh, progressive schools is about 15 to 20 minutes. Um, ours is 40 minutes. We're not going to change that. Um, uh, that was surprising to people, but um, we, uh, uh, we're, we're happy with, with the 40-minute uh, lunch. They, uh, again, fifth grade parents haven't experienced that yet. They haven't experienced kids going uptown. Uh, they, there was some interest in talking about that as well. Um, those things won't be, uh, won't be changed in this schedule. The same footprint of the day remains. Um, we had, uh, um, we had some concerns about home ec. Um, I had a, a parent who uh, felt very strongly that home ec was um, a, um, a happy time for her son, and I appreciate that. Um, another value add I didn't get to talk about is that in grade eight, we're going to be able to offer computer science one to every eighth grader. Um, and Mr. Brad Ashley will be teaching that class. And that's a, that's a big gain. Mm -hmm. uh, that sets up the next four years for kids to really pursue higher level uh, uh, courses in computer science. If they have the, a quarter of comp sci one out of, out of the, the gate from middle school. So there absolutely some uh, uh, um, efficiencies. There are some losses and there are some significant gains. You mentioned uh, homework, trying to decrease it, and I know that's come up in challenge success a, yes. a number of times. Yes. How do you see that working out? You mentioned you're going to try to reduce it. How, how is that going to happen with this new program? Well, currently our levels are an hour at sixth grade, an hour and a half at seventh, and two hours at eighth grade. Now, your mileage may vary on a given night but those are the averages. Um, I'd like to see our, our faculty uh, really consider what would be wrong with 45 minutes at grade six? What would be wrong with maybe an hour to an hour and 15 in grade seven and no more than an hour and a half in grade eight on a, again, some nights may be heavier than others. That's uh, something our faculty hasn't grappled with yet. Um, I, I think that having expanded time to do work in school is supposed to be part of that work. And we should be setting kids up for uh, a different experience with homework by having longer class periods. Again, it's not about having longer time to lecture. And I think um, back to uh, the point made earlier, what, what measures are we gonna look for for success? Well, we're going to look for the kind of professional development teachers are asking for. We're going to look toward uh, uh, the kind of, uh, of uh, PBL work that uh, teachers are willing to put in. How does IDE fit in with, with these things? These are all, all contiguous goals, and they are achievable simultaneously. Um, it's likely we're going to have to look at, at this paradigm very closely when we get to this time next year and um, sharpen our pencil and make sure we've got it right. There's no such thing as a perfect schedule, but are we doing the best we can for our kids at, at, with what we have? And we'll, we'll continue to do that work. Any more questions? Thanks. Thank Tom. you for your Thank time. Thank you very Tom. much. Thanks. Mr. Carlin. There's a lot going on. 
I'll start with uh, the financial report for the current year. Uh, we're, our surplus is edging up towards uh, half a million dollars. I hope to get there, but regardless, we're going to be pretty close, which uh, fits in with the overall financial plan um, for, uh, for the district uh, in uh, allocating um, pretty close to what our natural <coughs> surplus is to offset the tax levy in the budget. Uh, for next year. Now, speaking of the budget for next year, there's going to be a public hearing on May 9th. Um, so everyone come out and hear the budget again for the uh, third or fourth time. Uh, we have filed our property tax report, report card with the state, which uh, I believe there's a resolution for the board regarding that a little later. Um, and um, in the last, uh, or in a week before break, the board actually had a, uh, a special meeting uh, wherein uh, they passed a uh, uh, resolution to put a, uh, a referendum on the, um, on the ballot along with the budget uh, in May, uh, allocating another $1.5 million dollars uh, this is not new money in the budget. This is uh, surplus money we've had on hand in our debt service fund uh, towards the uh, already approved uh, 24.8 total million dollar uh, total project uh, for the um, uh, capital project. And the reason for that is because the, uh, the bids came in much higher than anticipated. So we're actually doing a lot of cost cost cut analysis and trying to allocate some uh, extra dollars towards that project so we can find a, a happy median where we can move the project forward. So I think I have um, financial action items. Uh, I have the property tax report card and then also a um, uh, foundation grant, or actually it's an increase to a, uh, a current grant that came through uh, this afternoon, as a matter of fact, for the Student Global Leadership Grant, and uh, we're asking uh, additional funds for that uh, that were necessary for that grant, and as always, we uh, thank the foundation for all the support they give us. So I would ask that the board uh, pass those two financial action items. So with regard to the report card, that's simply just a state filing you'd make based that's on... That's a state form that needs to be filed. It would have been filed at the last meeting, but it wasn't available on the state website at that point. Okay. So there's nothing really subjective about what no. goes in here? It's filling out a form. Okay. Um, with our proposed budget data. Okay, great. Can we take both resolutions at the same time? Can I get a motion to approve resolutions A and B on the financial action items? So move. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Next, we have uh, the reason this meeting is on a Tuesday, which is uh, the annual Southern Westchester's, uh, Southern Westchester BOCES uh, budget vote and trustee election. Um, the budget vote, uh, the numbers are fairly high for the administrative budget this year, and that's not because of cost increases. As far as BOCES is concerned, it's uh, actually due to revenue reduction. Uh, They're uh, apparently winding down a um, uh, some kind of surplus that was al or a fund that was allocated to uh, offset retiree health benefits, and uh, that in this year and anticipated for next year is really driving up the cost of uh, the administrative budget. Yeah, I saw your explanation for that, Dan. I, I'm sorry, I just don't, I don't understand it. I mean, because it, it talks about a revenue item and you're talking about a liability drawdown? Yeah, if you look at their financial statements, there's a, a line item, a revenue line item. Yeah, it's miscellaneous, it's yeah. miscellaneous income. And, and according to uh, my question for Southern Westchester Boses, because, you know, when I ran the numbers, I said, how can that be if your costs are going up 2% that we're getting a 14% increase in our administrative yep. uh, budget piece when our, our, our you know, our uh, average daily attendance has been fairly flat for the last few years. 
And the reason is that revenue line reduction, which the explanation they gave me is that they're winding down a, a liability now. Doesn't it's matter. It, 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 can it, we get a better <laughs> answer from them, Roy? Yeah, we can certainly reach out. Try to have them explain <clears throat> that. At, you know. I mean, I read. I, I looked through the report yeah. and I read it, and I didn't understand it. I sent the email to Dan and. I think this is what they came back with, but I, I still don't, still don't understand it. And You're it, not alone. It, yeah, it's a huge increase. It is. Yep. At times like this, when there have been questions regarding the BOCES budget, past boards have sought to send a message by not supporting it. I don't believe we've supported it in the last <laughs> five years. <laughs> I mean, and not that it has made a difference. It yes, they don't need us to approve it, but it's, it's we can reach out, Mike, and, and try to get a better explanation. But you know, well, I'm, I'm not just uh, I think we talked about this last year. But so they come up with the budget. Who who has to approve it? I mean, the obviously boards. we 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 vote on it. And we say no, but if more, all if, the other boards. Yeah, if if a um, <clears throat> if more boards in their uh, component districts vote down the budget then support it then they're limited at the prior year's budget so it's right talking to other districts i mean um i look through this you know all the different um increases for all the different budgets and they're right around two percent few are over many are under mm -hmm. and they're getting away with increases of double digit i've only been on the for two years and it's been two years in a row or it's been double digits. Mm -hmm. So when you talk to other districts, what do they say about policies? In my experience, people complain about it, um, but many boards still feel, look at BOCES as a necessary entity. And so they, they've <laughs> supported the budget. They do. Very few boards, well, I shouldn't say that. In my experience, the boards I've worked, you know, that I know about don't take the time to really explore in detail, they're the BOCES budget like we are. Yeah, so they kind of give it a blanket yeah. yes. Yeah. It always seems to me at some point, you know, we, and I don't know quite how we do this, but we might have to step it up and get involved with them in some way. Um, yeah. Because that's the only way you really can influence it from what I can tell because our voting of no, they probably expect it that we'll do that. But at some point, do we say, okay, we're managing our cost. Do we want to help you? understand yours better yeah sure. well I mean, I'm just looking at from um, other board perspective of other districts mm -hmm. that they're looking at these numbers and you know we're all under um, these types of constraints they don't seem to have any constraints on what they're doing and that's what I don't understand that why other boards aren't looking at their own budgets and yeah. I mean that the absolute dollar numbers aren't huge for a budget of 50 million but the percentage increase, if they continue at these rates, right. will become an issue even for sure. Sure. our type budgets. Yep. Is it arbitrary or is it formula driven? It's formula driven. It, well, their costs, they determine the costs and then they spread it out via formula over their component districts. And the formula is the, uh, the average daily attendance for, uh, I think it lags about a year or two. The other part of the BOCES budget is driven by the services that you use. And we're this heavy users. This part of the budget is based on your share of the enrollment in the county. Well, we use them quite a bit. We do. Right? We use yes. them uh, yeah. significantly for technology. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think we should put Mr. They've had Forsberg some significant on the board issues with BOCES. their retiree side, which has driven their budgets to, it's not sustainable. Uh, uh, the way they presented to Superintendent Script for the way the retirement system, the way they pay their retirement benefits out, yeah. is just not sustainable, and they've been not able to negotiate um, a reduced retirement benefit. They, the union that you uh, work with, at least last time they came, was that would agree to no increase in salary, but kept the retirement side, which has been just not not a sustainable model. But your recommendation would be would make sense. Um, and I would suggest that perhaps a couple of us um, get involved in their budget process sure. uh, next year. Yeah, I'd be happy to facilitate that. Yeah, I think that's the only way to influence. Yeah. yeah. 
So the, the people that, uh, there were three individuals that are going on the board, that's the board of BOCES? Yes. So are those individuals, are they supposed to be representing the, the district? Yeah. Yes. Yes. And so they're the ones that we would look to to say these right. increases are ridiculous? That's right. Has anybody from Bronxville ever been on this board? I, that, not, that I don't know. I, I don't think so, as far as I know. I know if, do you have to be a sitting board Here member I'm to like be on the BOCES board? No, I'm just, no. I, I, I'm I just so. trying to figure out no, I don't think you do. who's on these boards. BOCES Nancy boards, is there, typically, they're independent. Um, people stay on them for decades. Because nobody wants to do it. Well, there are people who really like doing it. Yeah, that's true. Can we put write in candidates and nominate them now? <laughs> <laughs> Jeff Roar's free. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's not watching. He's a perfect person for this role. <laughs> <laughs> so, do we have a resolution in front of us? Got any? We do. <laughs> okay. Some of the people are on the proceeds board. Can I get a motion to approve the res to vote on the resolution? In front of us, I should say. I'll make a motion. Did that we have the vote? Yeah. I'll make that motion. We need a second. Second. Any discussion? I'll discuss. I'm not going to vote in favor of this. That's my discussion. <laughs> um, anybody in favor of this resolution? No. Anybody against? Great. We have one. Six no's. Okay, we're four for four in my tenure. <laughs> there was one a few years ago. That not not since 2014, maybe. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Must have been 12 or 13. Okay. Any other financial? Uh, we I have mean, trustees sorry. now. Trustee election. Okay. Um, can we get a motion to um, vote on this resolution? Give me a second. Second. Okay. All in favor of the slate of trustees uh, for the BOCES board. No, I better abstain. <laughs> Six abstentions. I'm abstaining. Anybody against? I'm against. Uh, against. I'm the only abstention. Two abstentions. Three. Okay, great. Thank Three you. Abstentions. Three abstentions. Terrific. <laughs> Facilities. <laughs> so, <laughs> so when we're doing um, Our board responsibilities in, yeah. in July, mm -hmm. let's a couple of us do it. Yeah, that's what you have to do. And we should talk with you about what concerns the superintendents have got, because I'm sure they're probably quite similar. It's the same discussion, yes. Conversation for July. Correct. Not now. I mean, not a year from now. No, I understand. Facilities. This, this coming July. Great. Facilities. Uh, if anybody took a, a drive up uh, Midland or Meadow, you can see that they're laying the carpet. Mm -hmm. uh, it's progressing. I think they did 30 or 40 yards today when I was watching on my, uh, on my camera. And um, we're still targeting Memorial Day. You know, it's an aggressive timeline. If weather permits with the track, that's the issue. Once they finish the field, then they move on with the track. They can't do them both at the same time because they have to move trucks and materials onto the field. Um, so with good weather in May, we're still, I, I have my doubts, but uh, no one has officially moved the date beyond Memorial Day. Um, April 30th, we're having uh, pumps arrive, so there should be trucks and uh, uh, cranes and, and all kinds of crazy stuff screwing up the parking lot in Midland Avenue, and uh, it's going to be bedlam that day, but uh, you know we're, we'll be prepared for it. Um, I think beyond that, it'll take a few weeks of installation and testing, and then we should be up and running with the pumps. Uh, we're anticipating awarding... Uh, library bid and hopefully a uh, the rebid uh, GC contract and 
possibly an electric bid as far as um, construction projects ongoing at the May 9th meeting. Well, GC uh, bids won't be awarded then, just the elect there's just a library bid. Just the library bid. The ones we're going to do May 21st. <coughs> yep. And uh, the library, we're, we're trying to move that timeline up because uh, uh, we want to get that finished for the opening of school. So we're uh, looking to move out of the library by Memorial Day and get, uh, get demolition started uh, on second shift while we're still in session. And uh, so we get a running head start for the summer. Um, you know, and, and I think, you know, finally after, I don't know, four or five years, <laughs> this library project is going to get done this summer. Knock on wood. And uh, I have one facilities action item that we're walking on. It's a resolution uh, accepting a bid withdrawal uh, for the uh, bid for the electrical contract for the um, renovations and additions project and uh, that is due to a mathematical error uh, so we're allowing that uh, contractor to withdraw their low bid which uh, was probably coming in below cost and would have put them out of business um, so we're allowing them to do that and uh, and we're uh, going to work towards getting an electrical contractor by the May 21st meeting. Can I get a motion to approve the um, acceptance of the removal of their bid? Motion. Second. Second. All in favor? <coughs> Aye. Aye. Thank you. And I think that's it. We have some other action items. Athletic mergers, which is, uh, you know, it's we work with, with other neighboring distri districts, Mount Vernon, Tuckahoe in some cases, Edgemont, uh, East Chester, and, uh, with, and, and New Rochelle uh, for various uh, sports uh, so that we can offer programs to our kids um, where a small school like us might not be able to. We're able to combine with other districts. So we have uh, resolutions to merge for boys and girls skiing, boys uh, swimming and diving, girls swimming and diving and softball, uh, modified and varsity ice hockey, and girls volleyball. And so these are for next year? Yes. Getting a head start, so tick off a few from the uh, reorganization meeting. Great. And there are really no changes to, to prior years? I don't believe so. Okay. Yeah. All right, um, can we get a, a motion? To, can we just do them all at the same time? Yeah. Yeah. A through F. So we can, can we get a motion to approve resolutions A through F on the athletic mergers? Motion. So moved. <coughs> Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. The other uh, item is the uh, uh, approving a uh, compensatory day. Uh, According to the BTA contract, we don't use all the emergency uh, days in the calendar. We will give one day back, um, as in, uh, off as a holiday, <coughs> if you will. <clears throat> and so looking at uh, the schedule, you, know, you can't do it too early because you never know with flooding and snow in April and everything else that could happen. But looking at the schedules and trying to work around uh, state testing and AP exams and prep for AP exams and, and all of those considerations, uh, we determined that uh, our recommendation is to make Monday, June 24th, the, uh, the give back day. It's during exams, but that particular day, we're not giving any of the region's exams. So does that mean that the, the building's closed or? Well, the, I believe the custodial staff will still be here. There'll be yeah. maintenance people here, building will be open. Uh, I mean, I just saw that, I think it was Ann Myers sent out the exam schedule and that was like a makeup day or something. So. Yeah. But we'll probably remove that. She didn't, oh, she didn't have okay. it. She didn't have information yet got it. until the board approves it. We'll make sure there's another yeah. day so yeah. students can make up exams. Okay. Can we get a motion to approve the, um, what are we calling this? Calendar change. Calendar change. Calendar change. Calendar change. Motion. Second. 
Any discussion other than the fact that I will be the least popular person in my family for yeah. taking June 24th as yeah, the get back day? <laughs> and the seniors don't get a benefit. Right? Well, if it makes you feel any better, I'm the least popular person in the entire school. So. <laughs> this is the Dr. Montesanto get yeah, back day. Exactly. <laughs> The elementary teachers are your choice. It was your decision. All right, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. <laughs> um, <laughs> on to committee reports now. Great. Any any committee reports from Not the last me. meeting? Action calendar. We have another meeting um, uh, quite soon, actually, about two weeks on May 9th, and then we have the following uh, the meeting following the election. So good luck to those folks who are up for election um, at this point I guess we can go to public comment commentary so anybody from the public would like to add to the meeting terrific um, can I get a motion to adjourn so, so moved. moved all in favor Great. All right. Second. thank you everybody's happy to do it right